or growing out perhaps less out of an artistic genealogy than a, uh, an academic one, particularly the field of visual studies, that it was kind of a performative visual studies essay uh, in a sense. So I think that's fascinating as well. Um, so I, I want to sort of open that up to all of you and to ask whether we need to figure out what the genealogy is or whether we should comfortably refrain from, from doing so. This being academia, um, we all know that someone, probably someone in this room, is going to attempt to establish a genealogy sooner or later. So let's have our say now what we think it ought to be. Um, it's interesting that uh, Pierre Bourdieu actually worked with Hans, ha I mean, uh, Hans Hacke in terms of discussing uh, institutional critique. Bourdieu lays out a kind of basic framework that is to say that um, discourse actually produces its own meaning systems. And when we think about genealogies, for example, each discourse has its own kind of ways in which things are in understood and that history is kind of interpreted. But discourse, and clearly through theater, through performance, through sculpture, all these kind of artistic disciplines, but equally so other kind of disciplines as well, biology, uh, architecture, ge geography, whatever. But inside of that is also power, and I, I just wanted to kind of indicate that one of the things that I think interventions do is not just move through space physically, but also between discourses. And this is the maneuver that I think Claire Bishop clearly misses um, in terms of her own position within the framework of the artistic discourse. I appreciate your comments. I never give uh, Claire Bishop any credence, I don't even mention her name, because I think it's such bad argumentation, it's like, it gives it too much power just to react to it. And I think like, it misses that, because clearly Claire Bishop is basically just reifying the boundaries of art discourse. It's the same way of like trying to give credence to Jerry Salt's criticism, it's kind of like, you feel like you're battling with a jellyfish or something, it's just, there's no there there. So it's like, I think that you have to kind of stick with the kind of line that I think that Bourdieu kind of traced out in, in institutional critique places, which is that genealogies are power formations that we must, if we're going to trace these things, be very aware of and also problematize our relationship to those genealogies too. Uh, just, uh, just sort of with, with that, and I appreciate what you say about, um, about, about Bishop and reifying her, which is also what happened in many ways with re-quoting Michael Fried all the time. So the, um, the, uh, the, I, I also... You know, I, uh, I worry about the uh, about introducing another um, uh, academic term. But if we think about the Foucauldian notion of genealogy, the, that's it's very much about uh, it's very much a resisting a search for origins is his orientation, and really more what he's interested in is tracking what he calls discontinuities through time. And uh, what I find that that model helpful because for me then. The, the genealogy, genealogical work isn't about the search for origins or the art historical conventions of the search for influence, um, but about um, uh, but showing um, uh, patterns of discontinuity and break, the ways in which um, the same terms are referring to have a multi-referentiality that people don't always um, come to terms with, um, th the fact that um, different discursive sites are um, encountering, quote, the same practices differently. That's very much the ethos in which he's working. And I think that to me, to, me, to sort of try to answer Larry's question, I think that um, it is not uh, all, you know, helpful to try, obviously, I hope it's clear, to, to, to establish one genealogy. Uh, and, um, and at the same time, I don't also think, I don't think it's helpful to pretend that we can throw out the idea of, of, um, of, of influence genealogy, et cetera, just because it, it will keep us from um, reckoning with the fact that they do influence each of us as different types of spectators. And so for me, my interest is often in trying to make, uh, my, to be vigilant about uh, the situated place from which I view and to uh, thematize that and, and to try to be aware of it as I go, which is uh, exactly the, a kind of self-consciousness that I wouldn't credit Claire Bishop with. Uh, yeah, because I, I could forget. Um, <laughs> well, I think that, you know, I, I think I made a lot of work kind of in a bubble up until very recently, and I think there was a tremendous benefit to that um, because the, and 
you know, I was putting something, you know, in the middle of downtown Seattle where, you know, the, the dialogue surrounding whatever that work was, was with people, you know, going to work or, you know, having leisure time, whatever they were doing, it wasn't about, uh, you know, Claire Bishop or what, who did, you know, who did something similar beforehand. But, you know, as I personally have become maybe more um, a part of certain institutions, you know, it seems like it's important to know some of these things, which brings me to this sort of end, this point that I think we have to, there has to be a certain level of flexibility. Um, you know, we may make something that exists outside of an institutional context and it has a certain meaning and how it's perceived can be completely different than once it's uh, within uh, a nice gallery space and with an audience that has a whole different set of criteria. So I think, you know, and as far as, as all of us, we have to be able to sort of look at it um, both in a, I guess there has to be specificity, but it has to occur sort of in multiple locations. Um, and um, let's see, I think the performance that Jennifer Parker and I did came out of thinking about not just one particular event, but the kind of constellation of things that were happening both in art school and in popular culture and in the art world simultaneously. And it was this sort of unique constellation of events around the fascina geisha mania, like this kind of weird geisha fascination. And, and the cumulative effect of that does impact everyday experience, believe it or not. I mean, I was in the grocery store and someone comes up to me in, in the vegetable area and says, um, I, you know, I saw that movie about you and I, and I, I really have, have come to appreciate your women and, and your ways. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, he didn't even have to say memoirs of a geisha. It was just sort of understood that was my movie about my people. And, that, you know, and, then, and then he wanted to share that he now liked me a little more. Um, and that looking like this, too. So I mean, so anyway, so, um, so, I, so even though the intervention took place at, the, at SF MoMA, in relation to the Barney exhibition, it was really also in relation to a particular moment, which sort of relates to the kinds of constellations that Foucault would be interested in thinking about as well. Um, one other thing, sorry, Larry, I know you want to go to the next, but I, I was just thinking too, like I, I always get this stumbling block with genealogies and I realized mainly it's because I think what really forces meaning in the world is the production of culture as a capital generating machine that has happened particularly since World War II, but really kicked into high gear in the 70s and 80s and now we live in it deeply. But I think that that actually has smashed um, academic divisions in terms of cultural production. So to say that like an art project is in, has a genealogy related to sculpture is to imply some sort of uh, causality that makes sculpture more forceful than movies, radio, film, computers, which seems highly you cannot defend that. So it just seems to me that the, the real genealogy is cultural production. And to be like art disciplines actually inf inform work seems arrogant or misleading in my opinion. So I, I want to follow on that to the second of the terms that I want to investigate, which is framing, which is obviously related. And it gets, uh, I think, to some of the points that uh, uh, NATO in particular has been making about the importance of uh, thinking through strategies in terms of uh, instrumentality and sort of actual power relations and power, power dynamics. What is the, the work doing sort of regardless of what its purported genealogy might be? How is it performing uh, in, in actuality? And I, I guess my question around this is uh, given, given that, if we're to assume that that is something to keep in mind, if we are to understand our work uh, as cultural producers as in any way political or transformative, uh, what is the strategic uh, ad advantage of framing this kind of work as art? One of the advantages I'll just say is that um, 